Welcome to Wearing the Right Mindset. Um, our speaker today is Sakoni Prince. He is a motivational speaker, author, and personal development strategist. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today because I believe the information I'm going to share with you is going to truly help change not only your life, but the lives of the people that you touch. Okay. In fact, my name is Sakoni Prince. And I tell people the easiest way to remember my name is to write it on a check. <laughs> Next slide, please. They'd be like, oh yeah, Sakoni yeah, that's exactly put on a check. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about wearing the right mindset. And what we're gonna cover is understanding where you are, what your destination is, what's the best route to get there. Recalculating, have you reached, or if you've reached your destination, and showing others to wait. Now, to me, having the right mindset is not just about how you think of yourself, it's where you want to be. For instance, if you saw me dressed like I am now at the beach, you'd be like, what is he doing? I mean, why does he have on a suit? at the beach. But if you saw me in a courtroom wearing this, okay, that's more appropriate. You know, I tell our children all the time, in fact, me and my wife, we have five kids, and I tell them, I said, I'm not raising children, I'm raising adults. And they're like, wait a minute, what, Frank, what do you mean we're not adults? I said, okay, I said, do you wait you get to school to put your school clothes on? He said, no. I said, you wait you get to church to put your church clothes on? He said, no, sir. I said, you wait till you get in the swimming pool to put your swimsuit on. They said, no. I said, that's right, because you always get dressed somewhere else. You always get ready somewhere else. You don't wait till you become an adult to learn how to be one. So when I talk about wearing the right mindset, it's understanding where you are versus where you want to be. Next slide, please. OK, so first of all, we want us to be honest with ourselves. OK, be honest with yourselves. And I know that can be challenging at times because oftentimes, quite frankly, we lie to ourselves. We don't tell ourselves the truth. We say stuff to appease ourselves. But you have to be honest with yourself. In order, I don't care what GPS you use. I don't care what destination you put in. If you don't have locations turned on, it's going to ask you, where are you? Because you could be right next to where you're trying to get to. Or it could be 5,000 miles away. You have to know where you are. You have to be honest with yourself. Okay, so take the next slide. We're going to go through each of these. Okay, so being honest with yourself. If you are considering a successful career, business, marriage, health, relationship, whatever it is, you are going to have to be honest with where you are right now. If things don't look the way you want them to look, that means you're not at your destination. And you know what? That's OK. But you have to move towards that. But a lot of people, they don't want to move because they don't see where they are as being a problem. It has to you have to be honest with yourself. So I want you to write down where you are right now. And I don't care whether it's in your relationship, whether it's in your business, whether it's in your health, whether it's in your marriage, wherever it is, write down where you are right now. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Are you content? I want you to write that down because that's going to determine your starting point, your location. And all this is about wearing the right mindset. It's about getting you to where you want to be. Next slide, please. Okay, now after you've written that down, check your surroundings. A lot of us have cars, or we've driven cars that have a backup camera. And one of the things that it do, when you start the car, it tells you to be sure to check your surroundings. Don't use the camera as an excuse for not looking back or looking to the side, because there are blind spots. You have to be able to check your surroundings and, and see where you are. The question is, are you around the right people? For where you want to go, are you around the right people? And I've covered all, I mean, health. Are you hanging out with people that, are, that have healthy habits? If you want to be healthier, you want to hang around people that have healthy habits that hold you accountable. 
even in a relationship? Are you hanging around the right people that's going to help you get to where you are? Check your surroundings. Even in your business, are you networking and collaborating with the right people? Is there somebody that you admire, somebody that you are aspiring to be like? Have you made a connection with them? So knowing where you are is so important because it gives you a platform to measure your progress. And so many of us, we don't do that. Because if we don't measure it, we can't find out if we've gotten to where we're going. In fact, next slide, please. All right, so verify your location. There are so many people in your life that care enough about you to tell you whether or not you are where you need to be. But are we asking them? Are we really inviting them to critique us? Are we really asking them, what do you think about my business? A lot of us, we don't want to hear it. I got this. I'm doing I'm doing my thing. But the reality is there's stuff that you miss. And I remember hearing Les Brown say you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. You can't see the picture when you're in the frame. And that reminds me, several years ago, I had an opportunity to be in Alabama Technology Today. The guy came to the house, took, took my picture, and I was standing there looking fly, looking cool. <laughs> I get the magazine back two months later, my tie is crooked. That's the only thing I saw. Because it was me. I'm thinking, if you would have just said, hold on for a second, man, let's string your tie. But I mean, but again, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame and there's stuff that you won't be able to see unless you have somebody around you that can actually be honest and open enough with you to tell you these are some areas that you need to work on. And see, oftentimes we don't want to invite people to do that because we consider that. But I tell you, if you do this on a regular basis, you don't have to worry about somebody checking you because you're checking yourself and you're having other people that care about you do the same. And again, they... They really have to want your success in your relationships and your health and your business. They have to be on your team in your corner. I'm not talking about somebody that you cut off in traffic. <laughs> Those are not the people that ask whether or not you're uh, Next slide, please. OK, so now where or what's your destination where you want to be? Is that a place better than where you are right now? And what are you going to do when you get there? Now, I know this is. This is a place I desperately want to go. This is Bora Bora, just in case you haven't, it's uh, immaculate. But anyway, that's one of my physical destinations for my vacation. But I'm talking about your mindset. Where is it that you want to be in your business, in your relationships, with your health? What does that look like? Next slide, please. So I want you to write down words that describe your destination. In fact, whether it's healthier, whether it's more money, more business, more influence, whether it's, it's growth, expansion. What are some of the words that describe your destination? And see, it's important for you to know what they are, because what what does success look like for you? If you haven't pictured it, how how will you know that you've gotten there? So I want you to write down some words that describe your destination, because it's going to be important, because when you get there, you can you can honestly say, I made it. But if you don't have those words written down, you'll meander through life and you will never be able to actually say with any certain, any assurity that you've made your destination. So knowing what your destination, knowing what it looks like, knowing how it feels, even if it's not a physical place, but knowing how it feels, maybe it's just contentment. Maybe that's your destination. Maybe it's peace. Maybe that's your destination. Maybe it's love, feeling love, being loved, being able to love. That's the destination. Next slide, please. So, and again, is, this, is that place better than where you are right now? You see, that's why I was saying you have to know where you are. You have to know your current location, because if you don't know that, how can you measure whether or not you are going forward, getting better, going towards your goals and your dreams. So I want you to write down why your destination is better. And it may not be just for you. Your destination being in a better place may be for your children. My youngest son, several years ago, I was putting on a, an event, in fact, similar to this. And I was, and I, I guess it depends upon how you look at it. 
I was less than a mile from my house. That could be a good thing and that could be a bad thing because inevitably I forgot something. If I had to drive 20 miles, I would have took everything I had with me. But because I'm so close, I didn't, I didn't comb through everything. So I forgot something. So I said, I got to run home and I got to get this. But I only have one time. I can only make one trip. I can't go back. So I'm in my mind, I'm going to make sure I got everything that I need, everything that I missed. My youngest son, he said, Dad, can I ride with you? And at the time, he was 10 years old. And I mean, we are driving. I'm doing 35 miles an hour trying to get to the house. And I mean, less than a mile from my house. And without being prompted, without having a conversation, our youngest son said, he looked at me. He said, Dad, I'm proud of you. And when he told me that, I stopped. Not driving. <laughs> But, but, on, but on, on the inside, I stopped because I realized something. He was watching me. See, we can tell our children all the time, you can do it, you can be whatever you want to be. But why can't they sit across the table from the heroes? Why can't they have breakfast and lunch with the heroes? Why can't they talk to the heroes on a regular basis? They see them on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. But why can't they actually have a conversation? with? Them? Why can't we model that destination for them? That's important to me. He made me realize just how much he was watching me. And so me succeeding was not just for me. I was I was setting a precedent for him. I could tell him, son, you can do whatever you want to do. But he see me not doing anything. That really doesn't stick with them. But the fact that he picked up on that, I was going after my goals and my dreams. And see, this is the thing. Social media, all that stuff has filters. I mean, they think everything is wonderful and perfect. And I remember Kevin Hart saying it took him 18 years to become an overnight success. <laughs> so many of us, we try to hide our failures from our children, but then they'll never learn how to recover. They'll never learn how to keep going. They'll never learn how to get up again, even being knocked down. And there have been times my kids have seen me at my lowest point, but they've also seen me get back up. They've also seen me get back at it. They all see me get back in the fight. We need to model that for our children. And that can be our destination. And that's why I know in my case, it's better now. My destination is better than me sitting at home on the couch. Better than me just punching somebody else's clock. My destination is not just for me. It's for somebody else. Next slide, please. OK, so what are you going to do when you get there? Celebrate. <laughs> Celebrate. I mean, why would you not mark a milestone in your life? Graduations, a celebration. Weddings, a celebration. Being able to celebrate when you've achieved your goals. And I don't care how small, I don't care if it's going out for ice cream, getting a sundae, treating yourself to your, your cheat dessert, whatever it is. Celebrate small wins. Because doing so, it helps to continue to fuel your fire to keep going. So many of us, we don't do that. And we, we diminish the progress that we made, even if it's just one step. We take away from the effort it took just to take that one. Sometimes it's just getting out of bed. I mean, when you don't feel like it. When things are weighing on you. But being able to celebrate even a small victories. Again, it's not just for you. But you set a precedent for those who are watching you, because believe me, there are. There's some inside your house, there's some outside. If they see you doing it, be, it's OK to celebrate myself. It's OK. So how will you celebrate? Once you've gotten to your destination, we have a party, a cocktail hour. I mean, there are so many things you can do to help establish in the minds of not just yourself, but those who are watching, that it's OK to celebrate yourself. And I'm not talking about always heaping stuff on yourself, but I mean, honestly, when you've done the work, when you put in the time, the energy and the effort, you deserve it. You deserve it. Next slide, please. Okay, now, this is the fun part. 
what's the best route to take to get there? We have a paved road or unpaved road? In fact, what type of vehicle do you have and do you have enough gas? Take the next slide. Now, what, was, what, what would you say the paved road is? I'm sorry? Structure. Okay. Structure. Easy. Who? I'm sorry? Easy. Easy, okay. Anybody else? Given to you. Maybe the paved road is with an existing company, an existing way to do something. Right, something that's already established. In fact, you may be joining a franchise. In fact, you may be a part of a in fact, relationship marketing company. You know, things that you can pattern yourself after. Those are paved roads to get to your destination. And again, it's not just for business. It can be in health. You know, there are companies, there are programs that you could actually ascribe to. And they have a, a plan that's already set up. You just have to follow the plan. That's a paved road. But then you have unpaved roads, ones that aren't clearly defined, ones that you really have to make an effort to get down. Some of them you actually have to cut, cut clear yourself. But it really depends upon what are you willing to undertake? What are you willing to do? How hard are you willing to work? Are you willing to cut your own path? Or are you willing to just follow a paved road? Now, I will tell you this. You have to make sure that you have the right vehicle. Next slide. Okay, now, this vehicle here is definitely one that you will want to take off-road. This one here, probably not so much. I could go from here to Montgomery a whole lot faster if I stayed on the interstate, okay? Now, if I got off the interstate, I may have a problem. I remember hearing Dr. David Jeremiah said that the bend in the road becomes the end of the road if you fail to make the turn. The bend in the road becomes the end of the road if you fail to make the turn. If you're on a paved road and the road turns and you decide to keep going straight, guess what? You're now off road. I could go from here to Montgomery in my vehicle. I get a whole lot faster, get that whole lot faster if I stayed on the interstate. But if the interstate curved and I'm like, I don't want to turn, I'm going to keep straight. I better have a vehicle that can get me there. And so many of us, we started off with paved roads. You started off following certain predetermined and preset organizational structures. But then it came a point where it's like, okay, I've learned as much as I can here. I want to chart my own course. But if you have a vehicle like this, I suggest you stay on a paved road. I suggest you stay where it is that you can actually get the most traction. Now, you may not be able to get as far or as go, go as fast like with a vehicle like that, but I will tell you this, that in those vehicles, you get a chance to actually determine your view. A lot of us think that success is a destination. It's really a journey. And you have to be able to actually navigate to get there. And there are so many things you'll see along the way. As a child, I used to ride in the car with my parents. But then there were times when I would ride my bicycle to certain places. And because I was riding my bike, I could see a lot more. And even when I'm walking, because I'm going slower, I can take in more stuff. And so even being off road, there are, there are lessons you can learn, there are things you can appreciate by doing it. But you have to make sure that you have the right vehicle. Because there are some people that are willing to go out there and cut, it, cut their own way, force their own way, take their own, create their own paths. But then there are others like, nah, that's too much work. I'll take the paved roads. And that's fine. You just have to know what type of vehicle you have and where you want to go. Next slide, please. Okay, now, do you have enough gas? Now, <clears throat> I don't care where it is you're trying to go. You're going to have to have enough fuel to get there. And when I'm talking fuel, 
I'm talking internal fuel. Your willingness and your desire to get to your destination. Because I'm telling you, it's going to get hard. It's going to get tough. You're going to run into oppositions, external and internal. But you have to understand your why. It has to be clear to define, because if it's not clear to define when things get bad, not if, when they get tough, you'll give up. I know for myself that my why is not just me. It's not just me. True enough, I want, I want a better life for myself, but I also want it for my family. If anything, like I said earlier, I want to show them what's possible so they can see. I forgot who it was, but there was a guy, they said, and this was in the early 50s, that no one could run a four minute mile. Their heart would explode. There was no way the human body could actually endure that much adrenaline to run a mile in less than four minutes until somebody did it. And then two months later, guess what? Somebody else did it. And after that, somebody else did it because they saw it was possible. We have to be able to show other people what's possible. So do you have enough gas in the tank? Is there enough gas in your tank to get to where you want to be? Because if there's not, you may need to change your destination. And I know sometimes it gets challenging because we want to be there now. The quickest way to get to where you're going is a slow, steady route. You can write that down, by the way. The quickest way to get to where you're going is a slow, steady route. I can't tell you how many people have won the lottery and five years later, they're broke. Because their mind wasn't where their money was. And so they lost everything. Having the right mindset is putting yourself where it is you want to be. And I will tell you this, you have to do that in a non-threatening moment. It's times like this where you have an opportunity to picture and visualize where you want to be. And then start moving toward that place. Because until then, again, you'll just be meandering, going back and forth. Not really sure. But if you ever take the time to sit down and say, this is where I'm going. This is where I want it. This is my destination. I did a video a couple of years ago entitled uh, How to Get Unstuck. And I talked about going to Hawaii. I said, but if I had a layover in Los Angeles, if Los Angeles was my destination and I couldn't get out of Los Angeles, I'm stuck in Los Angeles because that's not my destination. My destination is Hawaii. If you don't know where you're going, how will you know if you're stuck? You have to know what your destination looks like, what it feels like, where, where you're going to actually be able to celebrate once you've gotten there. So having the gas in the tank, being able to, and even if you got to stop and refuel, do that. That's why having the right people around you is so important because they will pour into you. And we're going to talk about that a um, <laughs> fact later on, next slide. Okay, now, recalculate. And I, I don't know if you've uh, seen those Allstate commercials. <laughs> In fact, when, you know, Mr. Mayhem, and he's always saying recalculating, recalculating, causing people to have accidents. Well, I've actually had, not an accident, but I've had stuff like that happen with my GPS. You know, when I decide I'm going to turn here instead of going up two blocks, and then it has to recalculate. And things are going to come up. In fact, next slide, please, if you don't mind. Things are going to come up. Obstacle, well, back, there go. Obstacles will be in your way. Obstacles will come up. Things will come up that are going to challenge you getting to where you want to go. That doesn't mean that your destination wasn't worthy. It doesn't mean that, that you don't need to get there. It just means that you have to make adjustments. Next slide, please. Okay, well, no, next slide. Yes. In fact, this is what I want to get to. Stubborn on vision, flexible on details. 
I know where I want to go. But how I get there, I'm willing to make some adjustments. I'm flexible. How flexible are you? Some of us were so hell bent on doing it our way that we cut out our help. There's some people that are there that can help you get your destination, but that means you're going to have to collaborate and you're going to have to share some of the success. And so many of us were like, no, 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 I'm going to do it myself. If you get to the top of a mountain alone, who are you going to celebrate with? I mean, seriously. But having a team, having people in place to help you make the adjustments that are needed. Again, your vision, in fact, you can be stubborn on that. This is where I'm going. How I get there, okay, just, I can work with that. We can make some adjustments. So, all of this is helping us to really look at how, how we are approaching our success. Approaching where it is we want to go. Next slide, please. Okay, so, again, going back to the GPS, I know I've used it several times, and it'll say, in fact, your destination on the right, or you've reached your destination. So, knowing when you have gotten there. In fact, next slide. So, the question is, how do you feel? And I know this may sound strange, coming from a man, talking about feelings, but they are important. They are important because emotions highlight our life. If, okay, here's a tip, and I'm throwing this in for free. If you want to become unforgettable, have a positive emotional experience with somebody. I will say on the flip side of that, if you want to become unforgettable, have a negative emotional experience with somebody. <laughs> I'm serious. I can, I can, if I knew each and every one of you, and, and I, I mentioned the name of somebody that you could not stand, as soon as I called a name, those emotions would come, quickly come back. But then if I mentioned the name of somebody that you cared about, that you loved, that was there for you, you would think about them as well. Downtown Mobile, there's an intersection. Every time I ride through it, I think about my accident. I got T-boned, 2001. I had just finished paying off my 1991 Cadillac Fleetwood. <laughs> it was pearl with the burgundy tear. I still remember. And this guy was going the wrong way down a one-way street and hit me in the side, spent the car almost 180 degrees around, broke my heart. Every time I drive through that intersection, I think about that accident because the emotions that were associated with that thing. So if we are able to make a positive impact to somebody's life, they will remember us. Somebody once said that there are three people that you will not forget. Those that got you in trouble, those that left you in trouble, and those that helped you in trouble. I want to be the latter, and I think you should be too. So how do you feel? How do you feel when you reach your destination? Emotions, your feeling of accomplishment, relief, joy. I mean, you celebrating yourself that I made it, I did it. Those feelings, they carry you a long way. Like next slide. All right, so again, checking your new surroundings. Whenever you achieve your fact destination, you still need to be aware of your surroundings, even on the way, even while you're going there. In fact, you need to do a check of the people that are around you, because everybody in your boat ain't bailing water. Some of them are drilling holes. <laughs> Those are the ones you need to get out. But you need to check your surroundings on your way to your destination. But, but in fact, once you got there, Again, in fact, making sure that you are there, making sure that you are where you said you want it to be. And see, I believe that in order to get the right answers, you have to ask the right questions. You have the answers for your own success. 
My job is help you ask the right questions. Because there are places that you can go that you know, this is not my destination. It's a stop on the way, but I'm not there just yet. And that may even be with how you look at yourself, your own level of confidence and assurance, understanding what it is you have and how valuable it is. It helps you to then move that out into the world. How many of y'all would believe that I had a stuttering problem as a child? Anybody? I did. I had a problem speaking, getting my words out. The best help I got was from my uncle. He says, Sakoni, the problem is that your mind is on sentence three and your mouth is on sentence one. So I was trying to get, 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 get everything out. I was so excited because I wanted to just get. But see, when he told me all I had to do is slow down, I started to gather my thoughts because I still want to get the information out. I still wanted to share. But I just had to learn a new technique. And that's why having people around me to help just give me that feedback. And I, I really need to start giving my Uncle Larry credit for that because he was the one that told me and and led me on a journey. And again, I say it's a journey to where I can now share. I love to have a one on one conversation with 10,000 people. Because that's how you really understand what you have to offer the world. I knew that I had something in me that I wanted to get out, something I wanted to share, something that somebody else needed to see, hear and understand. I had to push past my own insecurities. And I had to work at my craft. I had to put in the work. And that's another workshop. <laughs> Next slide, please. All right. So celebrating again, once you get that, once you get that destination, how will you celebrate? What will you do? Will you take a picture? Will you have it framed? Will you have a grand opening? Will you have a soft opening? <laughs> what will you do to celebrate you getting to that destination? And again, it could be something as simple as going to get ice cream. But you need to make a note. It needs to be, as they say in the court, let the record show. I achieved this. I accomplished this. I can't tell you how many events I put on. I have wanted to quit two days before. I mean, I was just heartbroken, distruffled, didn't know how everything was going to turn out. But because I, w I wasn't doing it for myself, I had to show up. My speaking coach, uh, Dr. Ruben West, who ha happens to be one of Les Brown's platinum speakers, after my event in, in New Orleans, he asked me, he said, Sakoni, what, what was the highlight of your conference? And I humbly said my keynote, but here's why. Not because I was giving it, but because being up front, I could look at the faces of the people that were in the audience. I could see their heads nodding. I could see the light bulbs going off. I could see them seeing themselves in a better place. In fact, when I was sitting in the audience listening to the other amazing speakers that I had, I wasn't, I wasn't doing it. Yo, are you hearing this? Are you getting this? I was, I was too busy focused getting for myself. My point is that after every event, we would go out and we would eat. He would celebrate. How are you going to celebrate after you've pressed your way through? After you push past every obstacle and everything that 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 has been sent or set to keep you from getting to your goal? Because if you don't celebrate again, that takes away from the struggle it took to get there. So you have to know how to, to celebrate. Hang me clap. All right. Now. This is part that I truly, truly love. <coughs> Showing others the way. And that's what I'm doing right now. That's what I'm doing right now. Preparing the action plan for others, being honest with them and giving them some gas. So next slide. And how am I doing on time? I'm sorry. I, I... OK, good, because I definitely do some uh, Q&A. All right. So prepare an action plan for others. Who will you help? I want you to think of a person right now that looks up to you. 
And some of you may not even know who they are. Some of you may do. How will you help them? What will you do to help them get to where it is they need to be? And it may not even be the same destination as, as you, but you can help them along the way. Who will you help? Because I guarantee you there's somebody in your life that looks up to you. I was in Guyana, South America, uh, speaking, and I had a chance to speak to a, a group of indigenous people, and they had a school. And I asked all the children, I said, I want everybody to stand up who consider themselves a leader. And I mean, these were like eight, nine, 10, 11 year old children. 90% of them stood up. They stood up. They considered themselves a leader. They had influence over somebody else. Somebody younger than them was looking up to them. And they understood that they have a responsibility to actually live a life as an example to the other people. So who is it that you're going to help? That person, that young girl. Who are you going to help? Who are you going to model this amazing life that you have for? You see, so many of us, we think that, okay, that's just showing off. No, it's not showing off. It's showing the way. And that's what you can do. But if you don't, one of the scriptures that I live by is to whom much is given, much is required. But I think a lot of people really don't understand what they've been given. They really don't understand what they have. And because you don't understand it, you don't see the responsibility that comes with it. And before I even knew what that scripture was, I learned it from Spider-Man. <laughs> Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility. And if you don't understand the power that you have, you won't see the responsibility in doing something with it, something positive with it. Because again, you have a chance to influence and to help somebody else. So prepare an action plan. And I'm not saying give away all your secrets. You can just give them bullet points. Give them a framework. How it is, where you started, what you went through, and how you got to where you are. You can help somebody along the way. And I know if you think long and hard enough, somebody, somewhere, helped you. Somebody somewhere poured into you. Somebody somewhere pulled you to the side and they gave you some advice. Now, whether you took it or not, that's a different story. But somebody did that because they care about you. I want you to think about the person that, that you care about. And I want you to consider helping them. Next slide, please. Okay, so be honest with them. I tell people all the time, there are two people I want to be delivered from. One, all they do is talk about their problems. That's all they do is talk about what's wrong. The other person is, they want you to think that there's nothing wrong. They have everything together, everything's perfect, everything's great, everything's wonderful. Those are two people I don't want to spend a whole lot of time around. Because one, I know that the person who is saying that everything is wonderful and great, they're lying, first of all, to themselves. And then they're trying to make other people think, okay, I don't have any issues, I'm not dealing with anything. No, all of us are going through something. But then the ones that all they do is focus on their problems, they're not looking for any solutions. They're not, they, they are reveling in the fact that, that they are in a bad spot. And most of the time that's done for attention. But my thing is this, and I, I want to be this type of person. In spite of what I've gone through, I was still able to make it. Okay, being honest with them, telling people that there are going to be days when you want to throw in the towel, when you want to quit, when you want to give up. There are going to be days when you want to just say, I'm done. I can't tell you how many days I've done that. But I also tell you that in those moments, I remember somebody's watching me. Somebody's looking at me. Somebody, somebody is looking to see, are you going to get back up? 
I don't care how many times you got knocked down. Are you going to get back up and get back in the fight? So being honest with them, setting proper expectations, helping them to understand you are going to face challenges. Mickey Rooney said you pass failure on the way to success. You pass failure on the way to success. So helping them to understand you are going to fail your way to success. Because if you're not failing, you're not trying. You're not putting in any effort. You can't trip standing still. If, you, if, if you're tripping standing still, you need to go see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. But if you're going somewhere, there's a possibility that you're going to trip and fall. Obstacles, shoelaces, I mean, whatever. But if you don't, if you don't share that with the people that you've been called to serve, you set them up for failure. I remember, and um, I'm going to share a little bit of my, I guess, personal testimony. Um, I was in college when I, if I rededicated my life to Christ. And I remember going to church, and it seemed like there were so many people that were there. Everything was wonderful and great, and they were to praise God. And I'm, I was like, wait a minute. My Christianity must be broke, because <laughs> I'm catching hell over here. <laughs> I'm going through. But there were, there were a few people in there that were honest enough to help me understand that there are challenges even in my faith. So I didn't give up because if I just looked at the ones who, again, I don't have any problems, everything is going great, I would have got so discouraged. They got so depressed. You have an opportunity to tell somebody, and I don't care where you've gotten in your life, you can tell somebody about what it took to get there. And you can help them understand it's worth the journey. Again, setting proper expectations. Right, next slide. Okay, thank you. Now, giving them some gas. Helping them to understand that you're beautiful, you're enough, you've got this. Pouring into other people. But it's hard to do that when you haven't poured into yourself. It's extremely difficult. It's challenging. I know because that was me. I spent a whole lot of time understanding who I am. A whole lot of time evaluating myself. A whole lot of time looking at the good and the bad. Because understanding my value has enabled me to help other people understand theirs. And one of the most challenging things is you trying to help somebody. That's why they say on the airplane, put your mask on first and then help somebody else. But a, a lot of us, we're about to pass out. We're like, here, here's some, here's, here's some ox. And, and we're gone. In fact, we're trying to put the mask on them, but we have yet to put it on ourselves. How can you help somebody if you're sick? Laid up in the hospital bed. You can't come and speak. You can't come and present. So you don't have a whole time for a, 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 a huge audience taking care of yourself. And again, not just for you. I mean, yes, it benefits you, but also so that you can be there for other people. So pointing to them, helping them to understand their value and their worth. But again, that's real hard to do if you don't understand your own. I want to encourage each of you in a non-threatening moment and the reason I say that is because a lot of people wait until there's a blow up, until they've hit the wall, until the tire has blown out and they are, they are having an accident. You know, they really want to look at themselves and, 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 and evaluate their life. But if you do it in a non-threatening moment, you can objectively see where it is you are. And then if there's a point to where it's like, I really don't see everything about me, Get somebody that cares about you. Somebody that, that wants your success to pour into you, to tell you things that you may not have seen, stuff that you may know but probably won't even want to admit to. So you can really work on it. Because you have to be able to cooperate. You, you have to be a participant in your own rescue. 
But once you've done that, then you have an obligation to help somebody else, to pour into them. Next slide. Just want to take me sure. Okay, all right. So, in fact, before we get to this, there's something that I want all of us to do. First of all, s- secure your valuables. <laughs> I mean, meaning that you, in fact, know where your person, your phone is. Because what I want you to do is I want you to take your hand, put it over your heart, and I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think about yourself as a little child. I want you to think about that little girl that you still are carrying inside of you. I want you to think about how proud she is of you right now. In spite of everything that you've gone through, everything that you've faced, she's proud of you because you survived everything that you've gone through. But I also want you to continue to make her proud by pouring into other people. Now, while you have your eyes still closed, I want you to think about the person that you can pour into. And they may be your same age. They may not necessarily be younger than you. Some of them may even be older than you. But there's somebody you can impact, somebody you can affect, somebody you can actually make a difference in their life. And before this week is over, I want you to reach out to them. I don't care whether it's for a phone call, whether it's a letter, a text, a DM, whatever you have to do, pour into them. But first you have to pour into yourself. All right, you can open your eyes now. I have created on my website, there is a uh, faxaconapress.com slash focus WC. You can go there. I have some goodies for you. I have some downloadable MP3s. I also have this presentation on there as well. And I will say this. If you need somebody to help you get in a better space and a better place, I'd be more than happy to help you do that. Okay? If you go there now, in fact, you'll be able to see all of those things, but you'll also be able to see uh, that, that I have some actual specials that you can see, in fact, when you go there. I do also want to say this too. I know a lot of you, and I, didn't, I, did, not, I did not know how many people <laughs> that were actually going to be here, uh, but my presentation is also sponsored by, in fact, me and my wife's shop. It's called Body and Soul Nutrition. We're located at 1860 Apple Boulevard at the Loop. Uh, in fact, we sell energy teas and meal, in fact, replacement shakes. It's, it's a great product, and I'm telling you, if you, are, if you are into, our slogan is welcome to a healthier you. Because we want you to be healthier. Because again, I don't care what it is you're endeavoring to do, if your health isn't there, you're not going to be. So we want to encourage you in, in that regard. With that being said, are there any questions, comments, or criticisms? I'll take them all. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, so before I was doing in fact, motivational speaking, I actually had a 3D animation company. We were called 3D Solution Providers. And actually, in fact, what I'm gonna do, not right now, but in fact, later on, I will, I will put this video clip on this page. I was at a conference in Dallas, Texas, and I, in fact, received a phone call. And in fact, the phone call told me that I was part of a quick pitch business Olympics. I had three minutes to pitch my business in front of a listening audience and a select panel of judges. I was one of 10 companies that were selected. And so I immediately started my elevator speech. And in the process of me doing that, I was like, what else can I do to set myself apart? So the next morning, I got there early. There was a guy in the back running the AV system. And I said, hey, can you play an MPEG file? He said, sure. I actually had the file on my cell phone. So I took it over to his laptop, he copied it off, pulled it up, made sure that it played and stuff and the sound and stuff there, everything was great. I said, okay, good, cool. So in fact, when I get on the stage, I'm gonna speak for about a minute and a half. And I really love this because that platform, it wasn't like some churches where you just keep going and going and going. At three minutes, they just cut your mic. I mean, they had a time on the screen, they just turned it off. 
So I knew I had to be on point. So I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak a minute and a half, and then I'm going to ask you to play a portion of the video. And then I'll, in fact, wrap it up. Well, while I was on stage, while I was there presenting, I had an epiphany. And that epiphany was that my words could be used for more than selling a product or service. They could be used to help uplift and change people's lives. In my Amazon best-selling book, Are You Climbing the Wrong Mountain? By Finding Your True Purpose, I talk about that. There are three things you can find about being on the wrong mountain. The first thing is you can say, this is not it. I can scratch this off my list. This is not where I'm supposed to be. The second thing is even being on the wrong mountain, you can see the right one. And that's what I did. While I was up there presenting and trying to sell my services, I realized I'm supposed to be encouraging and motivating people. So the third thing I learned, and I tell people that you learn even by being on the wrong mountain, the first thing, okay, this is not it. Second thing, I can see the right mountain. But the third thing is it's not going to take you that long to get up the right mountain because you have mountain climbing skills. There's stuff I learned even with my 3D animation company that I've taken to my in fact, motivational speaking. And so a lot of people think, I've wasted my time. I wasted all these years. No, you've learned lessons that you can take with you. If you see it that way, then you'll be able to actually achieve even more so because you've learned what not to do. So at that event is where I realized I was on the wrong mountain. Now, going from 3D animation to fact, motivational speaking, when I hear words, I see pictures. OK, and so that's why people could give me a two paragraph narrative and, and I could create a 3D animation based on that narrative. Well, now I'm just I'm reverse engineering it because in my mind, I see the pictures. I just have to turn them into words. And hopefully I do it well enough to where it paints pictures in your mind. And hopefully, in fact, where you can see yourself in a better light. Any other questions? Yes. Um, that was very inspiring, and I thank you. I think I just hit a breakthrough when you talked about the proper expectations. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, my sister died at the giving birth of a baby girl, mm. and I'm a Christian woman as well. And mm. naturally, I was sad. I was sad for a long time. Right. Um, I was a flight attendant at that time, so I resigned and moved back here. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends told me that I wasn't showing faith mm -hmm. because I was sad. Mm. <laughs> so I never forgot that. So when my mom passed three years ago, mm -hmm. because I'm an upbeat, smiling person, right. and, um, I would smile in public, but I would go home and I would cry. Right. And then I would come back. And then the same person criticized and said, <laughs> <laughs> Check your surroundings. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. So I guess my question is, um, I always want to be authentic. Right. I always want to let my light shine. Right. But um, because I was smiling, I wasn't being disrespectful to my mom, but I wanted to be able to grieve openly. But right. I didn't want the backlash. Right. So is that being not authentic or genuine to who I am by smiling and I feel like crying? Or <laughs> the only person that can really answer that question is you. No, not me. Is you. I'm saying, hey, hey, listen, listen. I would love to be able to tell you yes or no. The older I get, in fact, the more I understand the importance of being able to process feelings. Not ignore them, not suppress them, not bury them, process them. Because if you don't process them, they will come back. So true, so true. And they'll come back with a vengeance. You have to be able to process your feelings because in, do in doing so. <laughs> I think you want to process his feelings. <laughs> but in doing so, it really, it frees you up. You relieve yourself of the, of the weight and in fact the burden of it to where you can heal. I did a video and if, if you go to my website or go, go to YouTube and search for 
In fact, it's Kona Prince. In fact, you see all of my videos. I did one several years ago entitled, We All Need Somebody to Throw Up On. <laughs> we all need somebody to throw up on because see, our bodies, when we get poisoned or get sick, in order for us to heal, it has to come out. Sometimes it come out both ends. <laughs> but it has to come out. In order for us to heal, you can't get healed if you don't get it out. So processing that grief, processing it, and then you can start the healing process. Yes? Yeah, I was going to add earlier, I think that is so important. That's something I'm learning right now. I just changed careers, and um, it's, it was like a huge piece for me to figure out me yeah. and feel and pour into me and fill out, you know, fill my gas tank up, and then now I know my destination. Right, and right. And I'm not folding into this. I feel like as women especially, we are like – bred into this culture of graduate, get married, start becoming a mom immediately. And if you don't do those things and take care of other people, then yeah. your your role is kind of questioned. And yep. so that was a huge thing for me. It's like, wait, no, selfish is not a negative thing. Exactly. Um, sometimes it's good for me to, to take care of me so that yeah. I can take care of other people. But, exactly. Because you still want to do that, but it's, that's not all we are. We have to yeah. take care of ourselves too. That's true. So true. How are we on time? We got two minutes. Two minutes. Uh, any other questions? Any other comments? I do have on this website a feedback at the very top, and I would love to get your feedback. I mean, because it's important to me that I'm actually making a difference. I'm not just, I'm, I'm not just trying to make a name. I'm trying to make a difference. And I want to do that for each and every one of you. So with that being said, if there's nothing else, we can wrap up. Thank you. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Before we go, because you know you got to do it for the gram. I want to take a quick selfie. Everybody say yay. I love it. All right, thank you so much. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Body and Soul Nutrition. Welcome to a healthier you. We're located at 1860 Airport Boulevard in Mobile, Alabama. Stop by and get one of our great tasty meal replacement shakes or one of our powerful energy teas. Again, Body and Soul Nutrition, 1860 Airport Boulevard. Body and Soul Nutrition, welcome to a healthier you.